arm, he's really weak. Mm -hmm. And LGD have a lineup that want to push at 15. Yeah. So Mouse might expect to be able to hold without him. They have Fate Bolt, Shaker Fisher, and Power Shell, though. Yeah. So we'll see. Well, let's welcome everyone as well who's coming from the uh, the multicast stream, which has now basically had its legs cut off because it's only one stream. It's just this one for the tiebreaker. So to greetings to everyone who's out from that one, as well as, of course, people who have been following us here on the uh, the direct live streams coming to you from the Valve offices here. So, uh, Mouse Force versus LGD. Quick run through, as we always do for our game. We'll have uh, Pass. He's headed towards the offlane as the uh, support uh, shaker up there. Fata is the Wind Ranger, a normally mid solo player. They'll be going offlane for our sports while PyCat we take in that nature's profit in towards the middle lane. MSS will be the anti-mage on the bottom lane the farming up begins. and Misery as the, the Rubik will be babysitting him down there on that bottom lane. Yeah, it looks like the the laning here coming out from uh, from LGD. Did you introduce LGD? Yes. Yep. Okay, <laughs> I was a little bit off. Uh, so yeah, okay, let's do that really quickly as well then. LGD Yao will be playing as Batrider in the bottom lane towards mid. Rabbit will be playing on the Razor. And heading towards the top lane is Enigma in the base. Actually, taking a little while to come up here. He helped out mid in, in the beginning. Uh, DD on the Enigma it is. DDC will be playing as Witch Doctor. And then finally, Lin on the Viper. Yep. Wraps up the lanes, man. Now pass. He's going to see a very fast EDC. Haystrun is uh, actually what allowed him to get a last hit on a Triant, so huge CS uh, coming his way. Interesting to see Yao as well in the bottom lane. He starts with Firefly. He doesn't actually start with uh, with sticky napalm. He's not going to try and battle out that way, um, which is interesting because now his his control over misery is really restricted. Like Firefly is off, and misery is like, well, you can't sticky napalm me, so I can still battle you head to head with just base damage. If MSS gets really like aggressive, he can just get mana burn, mana burn and blink once he hits level two, and just wait for the telekinesis from misery. Now burn off most of what Yao's got on this bottom lane. It's true, they have they have ways of dealing with Yao in that regard, but at the same time, I think if you're Bad Rider on the Dire and you're offlaning and you just get free experience, I think you're really happy. This is uh, this is kind of the best lane I think Yao could have hoped for, since any sort of trial lane he would have met would have probably kept him away from XP, but they decided to put the Shaker top with Fata's Wind Rangers so they can secure that bit of farm in the beginning for him. Look but at Misery. You they're really paying for it. Right Look at the now. bottom lane as well. Yao he really going to town. Misery's taking quite a bit of damage here. He will still be fine, but... He missed the second napalm stack. Bad Rider's getting good farm. He's got 5 CS. Uh, the problem is, though, he's like burnt through every single bit of mana he's got, and that's his last clarity as well. But you're right, he has managed to grab, grab a lot of, like, some, some decent CS for the offline in, in, compared to what could have happened to him. And the fact he's managed to grab three levels is also really good for him. But this offlaner as well, like, Fate is being a bit of a nuisance attacking from down the low ground, looking at this stack, which is actually a double stack over on the side of the LGD. Like, they had the Radiant Creep Wave as well, a bit of their own Creep Wave get pulled over to that. Oh, bottom lane. That's gonna be first blood. Yao's in a lot of trouble. Pycat TP'd himself off that middle lane. And with the control, you take away all the mana. Like, he was still at a clarity, so he couldn't firefly himself out of that one, even if he wanted to. There was just nothing left for it. So the first blood goes to the mid solo of mouse bots, and then the quick TP in towards middle lane from Pycat brings it back, so he misses absolutely nothing up against the Razor, apart from maybe two CS. It's this is the thing Yao will have to keep. Uh, he has to keep his eye out for that. The the plus one is always there, and mouse. Might just be the best team right now at using Profit aggressively early on. I think every time they get that Profit for PyCat, he does an excellent job at being around the map. They make the right calls, they go for the easy kills, and as you said, he didn't even lose anything in the mid since he immediately TP'd back and, yep. and got back in shape here. He's, he's being out farmed slightly by Razor, They're going again bottom, winning uh, another bottom lane, lane for it is perfectly fine. Yao yeah, does a Firefly, he's going to be absolutely he's, fine. He's trying to bait the Firefly more than anything else, because MSS knows, like, okay, he can blink away in three seconds' time. Misery can just throw Yao back if things get a little rough. But they burn again through his, through his consumables. That's, that's the primary thing here. If Yao doesn't have anything to fight with, he can't stay on this bottom lane. Because he knows Pycat will just have a crack at him. Speaking of which, Pycat, yep, there's your TP coming in. He's waiting for... He's out of range! They need they need misery to grab him here, and they can't reach him. Pycat's movement speed is not enough. TP'd a little too far to the right there. A rare misplay from Pycat. He almost always lands the teleport into Sprout correctly, but yeah. a little out of position, and that's expensive. He loses a full creep wave in mid for that. It's going to take some damage on the tower as well as he runs back. We'll be looking for the bottom rune, and also won't be getting that. This is the worst case scenario for Pycat. 
He actually loses almost half his tower mid for this move. Oh, that didn't work out. <laughs> Voodoo Restoration is keeping alive Fun this feature as well as, yeah, it was holding Fader in here up, up, up on the top lane. The DDC dropped very, very low. And a fast medallion on Enigma. I feel like we've seen this very rarely, considering how, how useful it actually is on the Dire. Enigmas have generally prioritized getting a fast mech, but in this game, DD, he wants to maybe even solo Roche, which you can do with the medallion, and... Mouse will not see it coming since Enigma's just free jungling anyway, so they're like, okay, well, Enigma's leveling. Also want to point out, DD's level 6, 4.5 minutes and This is pretty much perfect rotation from him. 30 CS at 5 minutes. You said Mouse were going to invade and shut down the Enigma. It, it didn't happen. happen. <laughs> it just didn't happen. In instead, they decided to play this... It's, it's a very classic offlane, like the Earthshaker, the Earthshaker babysat, uh, babysitting a Windranger on an offlane. It's been a while. It really has been a while. But on the bright side too, like you know how... Like, you, if you go into the enemy jungle, if you try and shut down the Enigma, then... Alright, that, that's great. But you need to keep the pressure on, because Enigma will just go back in there and farm up. Prophet, now the TP again. Then, Pika. It's like all he's waiting for is for Yao to Firefly and an end. Now, tell him to pick up and drag back. That's Yao down again. Mouse wants to go 2-0. MSS was blinking himself up to try and get a, get a pick off as well. But not gonna happen. Radiance Middle Tower. This just seems to be the priority of Mouse. Was like, okay, well, if we can get the Batrider out, we'll kill him off. That's that's fantastic. We can't do anything about the Enigma. We'll just win this in mid game with the pressure, and if possible, we'll add some pressure towards the towers. We'll make sure we hold as many tier one towers for as long as possible. And Plaket has I'm just going to well, say, so based, in here. based on the games we've seen in this tournament so far, leaving an Enigma alone is a really bad idea. <laughs> yeah, I will He's agree. level 7 and a half now, 6 minutes in, Medallion, Sol Ring, and a Smoke, which tells me he is indeed going to try to go for the Solar Roche. He'll be going into the jungle, create some conversion, Smoke down to the pit. It's going to be difficult. And probably Solo it up. Because you actually look what's happening now. Pike is uh, switching himself into the jungle, and Fade is switching himself to be a mid-solo. So they leave pass to Radiance gain some experience levels, whatever attack. he wants, um, farm, whatever, uh, on that on that mid lane, while up on uh, on the top lane, while on the middle lane, having Fader here with the high level power shot. You already talked about during the drafting stage, having that power shot to clean off the LGD creep wave means that Rabbit can't just beat down on top of the tower. Pycat is already high enough in levels that he can just keep farming up with the jungle, and most of the time he wants to be able to TP out and look for kills anyway. Now, Didi, your right has gone in here. His army of conversions are also smoked up. I'm interested to see just how far he gets with this until a tree is moved over to scout for him. Oh, well, it's not happening so far. He's tanking it up very much here, by the way. <laughs> whoa! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Okay, that's gonna make it really difficult to solve ring as well. This is how he has to do it. He has to tank in the beginning so his conversions can split. Now the rest should be a lot easier. He can just keep rotating them in and out like this. He lost one. Oh, he lost one. That's actually a problem here. Middle lane. He loses the all Dragon Rabbit back right now with a Fade Bomb. Pycat's gonna come in. Sprout's available. No Wrath of Nature. He doesn't have the damage for this one. And Rabbit's dealing the damage actually from Pycat. He needed, he needed more mana. He needed more mana so he could have a Wrath of Nature. I don't know if that would have been enough to kill off the Razor, however. Oh boy, Didi actually failed it. That's a big loss. He invested so much time into... Okay, he actually... Never mind. He's, he's just playing it very safe. Coming in, he's he's splitting out. them. He, he's making sure he doesn't lose them. Splits them again. Now he's going to be tanking a little bit with the hero. Use the medallion. I'm focusing a lot on this. There's not too much going on on the map anyway, and this is the biggest thing now for sure that DD manages to secure this for. for if, if he doesn't get this, I, he is. He's this wasted is really, so much time to do this. This is actually pretty poor execution. He's losing a lot of idolons in the process here. They will still not help him out, because if they help him out, it becomes really Here obvious. Comes this is what I was talking about, oh, man. No. You take this long, and one tree is all it takes to screw it all up. And now it comes in, and they're like, Mouse was like, ping, ping, ping. He actually converts the tree, but where's the support going to come? Misery is actually a little bit too low now. Yao's already firefly up. Okay, so they'll take Roshan here. Rabbit will take the Aegis, the immortal. So I like can actually famous. help them. Yeah, yeah. It, <laughs> if, 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 the if the tree went maybe 20 seconds to 30 seconds earlier than this, then it would have been something big. But he'd be like, how are you meant to flag that anyway? 
that you have an Enigma missing on the map, Wolfity Duda. Not much of a surprise there. Now, top tier one tower, the bouncing cask was going to make sure there was no denial attempt there from Pycat. Well, they actually even got a tower meanwhile. Yep. This is a huge win for LED. Yeah, they get mid too. Mid too. Mid too. Mid to be careful this. they don't lose control of the map already. Like, sure, you got two great kills in the beginning, but... Look at the graphs, they're just dipping down. It's not the towers though which uh, Mouseports are really worried about. If Mouseports lose their tier 1 tower in the bottom lane, they'll be more concerned because it cuts off MSS's jungle uh, farming area. And MSS is at a point where he's only, well, he's like 1500 gold away-ish from having his Battle Fury done. And then his farm will go through the roof. So they should make sure they definitely do not lose the tier 2 tower in the mid, and they cannot lose any towers in the bottom. But LG Radiant's are forcing the issue very early on. Fallen. Wouldn't be surprised to see them doing another rotation very soon. With the Aegis on Razor, maybe they just go oh, bottom immediately. Go Speaking of bottom, he actually stole Firefly. Here well. comes so Rubik on the broom. <laughs> he's, he's a wizard, Misery. He's a wizard. Oh, the mana break. That's the mana burn. It wasn't up. Now he jumps in for it. And we'll take the kill. The Firefly should cut him a path out, and he'll TP out MSS. straight away before Razor can arrive. But that's still the third death now on the Batrider. This is actually going to hurt LGD in a way, but not too much. He's actually spent a lot of money on that Batrider. He's not too far off his blink. No, it's not going to be the latest blink in the world. He's still got 26 CS and Dyer's double Roshan plus two, uh, double Ro <laughs> one Roshan plus double towers is a lot of gold income for him as well. So, yeah, sure, Mouse do get these three kills, but I'm still looking for more from them. It's it's not enough at this point that they've managed to secure these kills because there's no collateral. And it's something we've talked about in previous casts about Mouse Sports is that the way they draft and the way they usually play, they put a lot of emphasis on kills, but not Radiant's enough emphasis on actually pressuring the map. We're, we're seeing it right here. It's LGD yeah, who traded. TP bottom lane. Towers. Look for that fissure to fly too. The oh, nice shackle. shackle! Hits on DDC as well as TD. The black hole might be there, but DDC's already on the sidelines. And DD can't reach anyone. The courier even getting sniped off here by Pycat. Pass. He's got fissure in six seconds. Rabbit's going to turn around for this one. While Misery going all wizard-like up in the air again with a Firefly. Vader, he's even got himself a TD rune right now. Rabbit's right behind him. No static link available. Oh, the Vader, from more Lin. Speed. You're right, Limp. He found Pass. Pass though still has fissure. You can turn this one to DD if he can just land the fissure. DD will go down here, but he TP's out the safety. The power shot with one attack from Fader. He needs more movement speed. He can't. He's blocked in by the dire creep wave. He's actually going to go down here. This is not what they want to have happen. Misery TPing himself out to safety. Pycat can also do so from in the tree line. And there's no one he can pick off here. But the T1 tower was still claimed by LGD at the end of the day. And Rabbit, he's staring Radiant's down Pycat. He actually can't kill him though because he has no stun. So Pycat just needs to TP himself out and he's okay. Yeah, he's just going to teleport to base now, but Rabbit will still go for this plasma field just to again put pressure and force Mouse on the back foot. So Pikeit can't free farm. He has to go back to base and waste a bit of time here. And all the while, that was a two for one trade for Mouse. The fight itself, I think, went really well for them, but they've lost three towers. Bad Rider was in the top lane. He wasn't even part of the fight and got his blink dagger. I'm starting to worry for Mouse that yes, the Anti Mage is starting to get some good farm and will be closing in on the Battle Fury. But it's not going to matter if the map has fallen apart already. But I love this from Lim. What was on the courier? The remaining thing was a headdress recipe. Just buys a new one. We'll have to sell it after this though. So, a little bit of money lost. But there's a lot of pressure being applied from LGD. They want the mech now. We're 12 minutes in, and LGD is staring down the barrel of that tier 2 tower. And it won't take him much to push it. A two points restoration on a Witch Doctor only begging to be used. The power shots from Fader are trying to keep this creep wave down in a way. And with Fissure as well as Fable as well as Power Shot and Wrath of Nature. Okay, between it all, they got a lot. And Pycat's now going to force the mid-tier 1 tower. It's a double army of Treants just directly attacking it. And the Battle Fury timing is pretty damn good. 13 minutes in for the Battle Fury for MSS. He's still needs map area to farm though. And that's the primary problem. And Yao's about to jump middle. Blink Dagger up. Pycat. Oh, he blinked her away! Pycat ran up face boots in two seconds time. The sticky nade farm's not going to make this easy, but there goes your face boots and Pycat movement speed. The support coming in from MSS. He can turn this one once the Firefly is off. In fact, the Firefly is wearing off in three seconds, but he's backing up. Really nice move from Pycat there to not get caught off by, uh, by the Bat Rider. That would have been an easy kill and would have opened up the mid lane a little bit more than it is right now to Rabbit, uh, for Rabbit to push out. He's still going to do some pushing here. By the way, he's building straight for an Ags. He's not getting anything before that. It just has the Bracer directly into Ags, so goes to show that LGD's game plan is get towers. Surprised he didn't go for the point boost to start with, like those yeah, extra stats would be nice. Kind of unusual. 
Top lane. Yao might be in trouble. He's using Firefly fire. again, but I. Uh, Pycat as well as MSS, they know what they want. They want to see if they can get some kind of goal from towers while Mr. Fisher Fable Power Shot combo. <laughs> it's... Man, this Witch Doctor is doing a hell of a lot of work with uh, Voodoo. Oh, that's a nice thing to steal. Plasma Field as well. Ravid tries to do it the real, the real way. But this tower is basically gone now. Still a lot of damage being dealt out by the power shots. If that runs of nature, bounces it. Okay, it does. Ravid's very low, but he has a regeneration rune and a Mega Steam model. He doesn't care. That healing. Coming out of DDC. Love the choice from him to not skill Maledict, but go for the Voodoo Restoration. I wouldn't even blame him if he maxes Voodoo MSS. Restoration over the uh, over the cask here. Since all they want to do is brute force these towers, he just needs to keep the healing flowing out. They the problem for Maus right now is they're doing great on MSS, but they've paid four towers for MSS to get the Battle Fury. He needs to continue farming. And then if they manage to repel for, let's say, 10 minutes without losing too much, mm -hmm. MSS can get in a position where he can take over the game. But LGD are item building to push very fast. They have the Roche advantage by being dire. And the Axe Scepter and Razor is actually up in 800 gold. These towers, the, the, the outer tier 2 towers, I think all towers are gone in 20 minutes for, for Mouse. Can they get a trade? They're the team with profit. They're not even close to getting a tier 1. No, I, I think they can still hold for now. Like, you've still got three wonderful range abilities that nuke down creep wave and dish out a lot of damage to the, to the hero. It's like a DD, down to one third of his life points. I think DDC's actually burnt more mana with Voodoo Restoration than he has with Cask as well as his ultimate. Definitely. He hasn't used the ultimate yet, so... Well, yeah, That makes my statement yeah. even more <laughs> correct. <laughs> out comes the urn. I was uh, looking for that item to come out for LGD, so that when they get these fights they can just keep the push going. Very stably here, and even a full draw. Bad Rider on the hunt. Will he find anyone? He will. He Who does he want? Close and pass. Echo Slam stops him. Future response. Rabbit the shackle. We got Yao and Rabbit together, and there goes your prophet. Ultimate DD. He's locked there. Pycat playing King of the Hill. The Enigma stunned up as well as the Malefus from Miz. Actually stolen from DD himself, giving Misery a double kill here. While on bottom lane, MSS is forcing out the tower. Rabbit comes in with his only turned on, but that means he also left Lin all alone. There's nothing to actually get him outside of this route. Pycat attacking from the high ground. The Viper Strike not making it easy, but Misery, Teletine just pick him up, drag him back, Malavastun into the Totem Stomp, but the Bouncing Stomp from DDC makes it difficult, and the Restoration as well, they can't attack him directly, now the Fade Bolt finally getting the kill, Misery so low on life, sticks out his MSS, Mana Boy is available, and DDC evaporates into dust. LGD only have the Razor left alive, they're going to lose their Tier 1 tower, and they lose the fight to Mouthboards who go 9-1 here in the tiebreaker of TI4. Absolutely huge Echo Slam from Pass, bought them so much time there. Batrider not quick enough on the lasso, Too late. and a quick response from Pass there secures them a lot of kills. Makes you think that Batrider shouldn't, he didn't even need to go in actually. He, yeah. he chose to go for it, and then they decided to commit to the fight. If he doesn't go in, they can chip away at the tower, or they can let Batrider die and not lose four heroes. But LGD tried to commit, they got punished for it, and Mouse with a great great series of plays during that fight with good sprouts from Pycat. The spell steal on the Malefist did a lot of work. The shackle from Fade the shackle was also in the, awesome. the opening shackle was also a really big deal there, so. LGD. They're eight kills down, they're still ahead on gold, but big swing in experience here from our sports well, securing that, and Antimage gets space. Dyer's the gold right now means attack. absolutely nothing, because you're getting necro books over on Pycap, the tier one towers will go down, nothing is going to stop this. Uh, MSS is continuously farming up the jungle, if you actually think about it, with the four tower advantage, which is currently going the way of LGD, if you take all that gold from the towers, and you put it into the current gold graph in the, way, in the favor of Mouse, Mouse are leading. They actually got themselves about 5,000 experience advantage just off that last fight. They are going to force their, their advantage too. This T1 tower, Lin's the only person up here. One TP support came in from DDC, but there are four heroes waiting to attack this top lane. Malefus is technically still stolen for now. There's, uh, there's not much time left on it though, so we have to be a little bit more careful about that. But the range band's pretty damn good. Pycat continues to farm up in all the other lanes. And what, Yao is considering ganking middle lane? but there's so many people looking towards top lane to defend it. The good news for Maus is that all the tier 1s are as low as they are. It means Pycat can actually just backdoor them if he wants, or that they can push out and quickly claim that gold, as you said. If they manage to get the gold, they'll actually be leading in this game. And the one push, uh, one fail push mid here from LGD is costing them a lot, because it's not just that they lost it, but it's... They're coming to kill. If they Blink, start hesitating... They got a Pycat. Rabbit's got his haste rune going as well. Pycat, he needs to get himself free of this one. Let's off his Wrath of Nature. The damage can be good on Yao, who actually gets himself shackled up by Beta. Killed off as well. Echo Slam! It 
Hans Rabbit! Mouse Balls actually lose nobody, including Pycat, who looked dead to rights, and they may even pick up DD right now. Vader, Shackle, off cooldown. Who's up there? His own conversion! He's locked to this one. They could have a crack at him. A follow-up Fisher. Bayvolt's gonna be there. Power shot again. He's, locked, He's locked! He's locked! He's locked on the hill! The ulti has to come out from Linda slow down misery, but Fader, he's got power shot back off cooldown again, lines it up, it's almost long enough to reach DD, but the restoration from DDC is keeping that Enigma alive for now. And those stolen conversions will not get home. Oh, that was really close to getting the tower as well, but again, LGD with a weird move. They initiate with the bad rider, Razor follows through. Do you see how Razor moved in that fight? They start opening on Pycat and then he starts moving away from him. Yeah. Pycat actually escaped. That was a free kill for Razor that he he thought they had him and but they let him like get he away. He changed his mind halfway yeah. through the fight about He thought, was okay guys, we're gonna, if the combat's gonna die already, I'll go for another target. And then essentially they end up getting absolutely nothing out of it. They even lose their mid tower that does get denied. But again, quick and big response from Maus and LGD. They need to be more people together if they want to go for these plays because Mao's already on the defense. Mm -hmm. Man, look at the look at the net worth. Uh, MSS is about to crack in in uh, 20 minutes, 10,000. May not seem like much, but when you've got so much across the three different cores, it's really damn good. Especially when you had an Enigma free farming at the start. Like you think LGD would have, have a bit more of a gold advantage than what they currently have, because we still only have one tier one tower down, and the advantage is only sitting about 1500 in favor of LGD. Experience is now 6k, but. Lin with a DD rune, they're coming Dyer's in for Roshan again, but I don't think Mouse Balls have an issue with this. Like, okay, you want to grab an Aegis the Immortal? Fine. We feel Dyer's confident in the fights anyway. We take tier falling. 1 tower up on top lane and try and force a little bit deeper. And LGD are committing 4 heroes worth of time to bring down Roshan, while Animate is still continuously farming and pushing towards that tier 1 tower and bottom lane. The Creep Wave may even take this bottom tower if LGD don't get there in time. And they are being split. Like, there's a double army of trees up on top lane. Misery can actually create an army of conversions to help. Now, you actually take a catapult. Yep, there he goes. And Rabbit will try and defend this. So the army of trees can be brought back. But Fader is waiting for Rabbit to get just down a little bit too far. So he can try and shackle the nail. And yep. Fader's actually building an Necro book himself. We've reached the point now where LGD might have missed their timing timing window. They have, in my book, Maus are very close to even winning this game because LGD have to execute a team fight very soon. They've got the Roshan again, they have the Aegis, but now with Maus's strength, with the Necro 3 on the Profit, with AM getting as strong as he is, they can keep the Speaking of which... They got Lin. Lin. There's no way to get out of the Sprout. The Necro units get summoned. The Profit ulti as well. One mana void will kill off Lin right now. Oh, actually not. Almost enough. Blinks up. One more attack. One more. Someone. Someone. Lin. 20 life points. He's getting himself away. Prophet TP is on cooldown. But will he want to TP in to ensure the kill on Lin? And Lin's being actually very, very elusive about all of this. And Prophet. Oh, look at him. He's, he's look at the lines being drawn. The lines being drawn right now. And DD is babysitting him the entire way back. Okay, they don't have to care about it anymore. They have Necro units up. The conversion army won't be able to hold this. Dyer's this is T1, Tier 2 tower while Viper has to retreat. Dyer's bottom At tower least the Tier 1 indeed. The I don't think they're getting the Tier 2 this time around, but it also, it doesn't matter. Maus are now evening up on towers almost. They're one Tier 2 behind. They have and they're going to keep splitting well. out the map. MSS is reaching the point now when LGD's lineup are pretty poor at dealing with him. My concern for the draft for Maus was that they wouldn't get to this point because AM would be extremely weak in the mid-game fights, but they managed to do it pretty much without him. Mm -hmm. They defended very well with four heroes, and now the anti-mage factor is really going to start kicking in. With the Manta style, he's 3-0, he has 200 CS almost in the 22 minutes in. LGD, they're going to, in my opinion, they have to try to group up somewhere and try to force a fight. If they ju the longer they wait, the harder it gets, and Maus are going to keep gaining more gold and experience than they are. And in addition to that, they'll also be taking more towers just over time. Cause yep. The pressure will be too hard to deal with for LGD. They don't have good split push defenders at all, actually. Mouse bots, I'm pretty sure, have now hit the lead for the first time with their gold advantage. The graphs haven't updated, but it's literally on zero, and MSS took so much money from that bottom lane. So, Fader, me from like the crazy wind ranger, or oh, Blink Lasso. He's still got wind run available. I don't know if that's going to get him out of here, though, especially with the Firefly. Flame Break bouncing around. He tries to TP out, but all in vain. But Pycat instantly TP's bottom lane, summons the level 3 Necro box, and they'll force the tier 2 tower down here. So, LGD, they already used Lasso, and they brought a lot of heroes up there. So, they know they're pretty much safe to take this one. Bouncing Stun, luckily for the Rubik, doesn't attack on him. But Pass is also waiting for a response. He was in the tree line, and they're coming back towards the mid lane. He's got Blink Dagger on this Earthshaker. Be very, very mindful of this. 
I have to get another tower. Okay. And they'll actually continue bottom lane because MSS is really hard to bring. Okay, he's blinking out. His mana stars on cooldown. He doesn't want to take the risk. And also with the necro units uh, expiring, they also couldn't push it any further. Noticing where uh, Pycat, like he's preparing for the later portion of the game. He did this about a minute or two ago. He TP'd to the tier two tower from the top lane, TP'd in here, and planted the ward behind. Calm. Calm. Preparing their basically stages of, of map assault. It also means to, uh, if you can get a glimpse of that courier and get a snipe off of like someone like, for example, DD who's farming up on the top lane. Speaking of that, snipe off, top lane, a DD. Recipe and he's dead. Malefus done, or maybe Pycat, black hole. He gets MSS as well as Pycat's illusions, and Pycat still a lot of damage to him, but not enough to get the kill. Flame break, woo! That mana boy is built damage over the bad rider. Pycat TPing out in the tree line. He is, Yao can see him, but can't get the kill. Now Lin might find himself a little bit too far up. Misery is here inside the smoke. There's power shots cleaning up most of the creep wave anyway. So we got Black a hole used to keep himself alive DD. only. Watch for DD, maybe even watch over for Yao! MSS burning him off, shackle shot, there's no trees to get there, but they already get the kill. MSS blink off cooldown while Misery fireflying himself around. Now you wish under Oldman. Pycat, he's away far enough, and Rabbit too low. MSS jumps in, still no mana void available. He just won't jump underneath the eye of the storm either. The shackle, it latches, he uses the range creep beautifully. Negacy Mortar will go. Misery in on the sidelines. MSS, he will die here. Finally, the dominating spree being ended, being a pickup and Throw down. What Lindrum a cast! Wow. Oh cast. my goodness! Holding pass, holding fader. Wind run himself away to safety. Pycat has still come in through the back line, searching for Didi as well as Lin. Misery's away to safety. The cask is good, but still they don't really grab that many kills for it. Now that that was pretty much the best LGD could have hoped for, considering they didn't have black hole. And like you said, is it enough? They're getting a little bit of space, but Mouse, Mouse will be using the space twice as well. The big deal there is that Antimage dies, so at least yeah. he's not going to be pressuring them now. But they lost their Aegis. It's going to, um, it's going to make it so much harder for LGD to go uh, push the high ground here with Razor not being able to play how, that how, aggressively. How Who's going to lead the charge? Push the high ground, man. You're going up against two level three books. Yeah, they're like you got two level three Necro books. You got a Prophet the split pushing the crap out of you. And you got a Wind Ranger, an Earthshaker, and a Rubik, which between Fissure, Fate Bolt, and Power Shot will disintegrate almost any army you create, including the Army of Conversions. It's a really tall order for LGD. The, the recipe here, I think, is try to push out the lanes a little bit so you make it less obvious when and where you smoke. Find one or two good pickoffs and then go for a tower. And preferably go for high ground because. Every passing minute, now we have double Necro 3 on Maus. I love their itemization, by the way. I think it's a great call to just go for the books. They know they win late game, so they get very impactful mid-game items, the two Necro books. You saw in the previous fight, Razor pretty much killed himself by Aghanim after killing off the blue Necro book. He took 500 pure damage from yeah. that. And it's... or 600, sorry. And, and he can't choose that. No. He really can't choose it's that. It's uncontrollable, and if it's not him, it's someone else killing it, and then they're gonna die, so... Well, imagine if Batron, you just throw them in, it's, uh... That yeah, you just put them in the Firefly trouble. and you wait. Yao, I, MSS will blink up right now, and they're looking around, they can see him Fireflying, the Mini Shackle, the follow-up Fissure, and there's a DD focus firing Fader, attacking the Batrider. 45 seconds, he is on the sidelines, no buyback available, that's tier 2 tower, top lane gone. Wait. There is no way that LGD can initiate, and there's no way they can hold on the tower line. So they just go for the trade off, but instantly TP in, fade up as quick as he can, power shots the creep wave down. He knows he can also get away with a DD rune with a lot of damage in a rabbit. Okay, rabbit's gonna try and take that with a fissure, holds him there, he's still taking the tower, mini shackle. Okay, fader, if that lash it would have been broken. Uh, the tier 2 tower should be the trade off. Oh, oh, slam! That's big from Puff with the stun! Instantly follows up from Rabbit. Pycat tries to throw out his own ultimate for that one too. And now DD being picked up, thrown down. The shackle and lashed on Rabbit and DD. MSS will come in. DDC throws his own ulti out. MSS, please mana for DDC. You need to stop that. And then stolen ultimate from Rubik. In he comes. There's your mana void. Spill damage out to Rabbit, but the primary target there was DDC. MSS one blinking with two hits. He'll get the kill. Shackle. It just holds Lin in position for one last attack from Pycat. They drag MSS up. He's almost down for the count. Can't blink himself away in time. With the return arrow of Rabbit with the plasma field getting the kill, the top tier 2 tower was still claimed by Mouseballs during that, but second death now for the anti-mage. And that was without Shaker in the fight. He opened the fight with the Echo Slam, everything got healed up again. I thought passed a little early, a little overzealous on that move, but it still set the fight. It made the fight break out, and, and Mouse actually managed to win it pretty much 4 on 5. They did, I believe, Echo Slam force up the mech. 
And made Witch Doctor use a lot of his mana on the heal, but he still has pretty much infinite mana, so that wasn't really the, the problem there. Mm -hmm. But now, next fight, Rabbit. Liking this item pickup a lot, he's gonna go for a Scythe of Vice on Razor. They realize this is all about locking down the AM. See, I'm not quite sure about this man because Pike is almost able to afford his own Scythe of Vice if he wants to. And without a BKB to protect Rabbit, they could in fact just turn it all around on him. They have a BKB on Enigma to protect Rabbit. <laughs> Well, well, indirectly, actually, it, it, that it, is going to be the case. He's he's still going to get close enough for yeah. like for any kind of like black hole. What is he, he? He protects with like with midnight pulse. Unfortunately for him, he's up against the lineup, which really isn't that strength based. It's it's actually a majority. It's like Ooh. we'll go Adji, we'll go Intel. He's 1400 away from the blink on the Enigma, which I'm assuming is going to be his next item. And to me, that is the game-winning item. That's the way they can win this game, is to get a big black hole and, and force Rex because of that. But there's always there's a Rubik on the enemy side who can steal it. He's a Rubik who, by the way, has blink and force and still has death ward. Yep. Uh, I don't think he's going to be able to use that really, though. The, the, chan the chances are minimal. I don't think Mouse Balls even need to use it. If LGD force the issue, then they'll fight. If they don't, it's continuously farming up the animation till he gets a heart. And the split push goes on. The bottom lane is actually approaching the tier 3 tower. And Roshan spawns up in 30 seconds. LGD are grouping up like they want to smoke, but decided not to do it yet. It's probably too obvious at this point. They have to defend their bottom lane. Razor will take in and plasma field up this wave, get some more farm. Rabbit is keeping up pretty well on, in terms of farm, but both Prophet and Antimage are starting to drag ahead more and more. Oh. Antimage closing in on a heart. How smart from Rabbit. I don't know if this is just he's waiting, he's waiting for his item, but they're waiting to jump in. Fade is here, pass. He'll commit pretty heavily if Rabbit comes out any further, which is maybe a bad move. The Observer Ward, it, it, it caught a glimpse of Lin. It caught a glimpse of Lin. And what was picked up there? Okay, there's Pycat's uh, Scythe of Ice. But 20 minutes until he can, he can uh, TP himself into a fight. So we, we just have MSS continuously pushing out top. He'll keep farming. <laughs> Getting the heart now, I guess. This is, they're they're yes. using Fader as bait. Yeah, he's 200 gold away from the heart on AM. They're using if Fader this fight breaks out, it could bait. actually be a big problem for Mouse. They're, they're only in. three heroes on the AM can't make it. No, he the There's the your Fisher, where's your Nether Ward? The Shackle actually latches on Yao. The pick up and throwback of, of Rabbit and Mouse Force. Four staff of pass. They're pushing him further back out of here. And he will go down. He actually buys a bale of Discord recipe before his own death. But you look towards top lane. MSS is already going to force a reactionary TP out here from LGD. And his rabbit with the re remainder of his ultimate. While on bottom lane, Shackle. So mini latch only on DDC. DD is still very far up here on the bottom lane. Which I'm surprised at when you've got a Rubik who can jump so easily on him. Considering they lassoed the book there, I think they're going to be happy with getting a 1 for 0. I think Mouse should have... I didn't notice that. <laughs> Mouse were in a really bad position there, actually. There were three heroes bottom. Sure, Prophet has TP, but Antimage was top and there was no tower to port on. So LGD actually managed to initiate a 5 on 4, but they missed the lasso. They got a book out of it. And they end up killing the Shaker only, so... Mouse kind of dodging a bullet there, will continue to farm the the top lane with AM and push out the mid lane with Pycat. As long as this game goes on like this, Mao's mm -hmm. are cruising to victory, there's no doubt about it, and LGD know it. So the question is, what's their response? What are Roshan. they thinking? Get Roshan, get a blink on Enigma perhaps, he has the gold at this point. MSS is going to take the tier 3 tower if they finish this Roshan. I guess it's literally that simple. Uh, Yao comes to defend, but he can't defend up against an Animage. I also want to throw something out here, man. Is this it's a worthwhile game for a Rubik to pick up an Aghanim Scepter, considering there's Enigma and Witch Doctor on, and um, and Razor on the opposition, and Viper. And, 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 is this a legit Aghanim's game? Yeah, it's a good next item, I think. There's a lot of uh, a lot of good steals, so I wouldn't be surprised to see Misery get it. Alternatives are probably Hex, even a third Necro book if they want it, but I think that's going to be so late that it's kind of irrelevant compared to other items. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the best exalt to steal for him is is actually the Death Ward. I, I guess that's where he will get the most value out of the eggs, is what mm. I'm trying to say. Black Hole will still be the big steal if he can manage to pull it off. Dyer's and if his positioning is, is as good attack. as it has been the rest of the game, he still hasn't died on the Rubik, by the way, then he will be able to steal it from DD, and that could be the game-winning fight for Mouse if they manage to steal Black Hole and turn it around. LGD has a lineup that clusters up a lot. Razor needs to go in front, Batrider needs to follow through, Viper, they kind of have to chase in a group, so getting a good turnaround black hole for Misery is actually not that hard as long as he manages to steal it. 
LTD just smoked up, ran through their entire jungle searching for somebody when they saw four heroes underneath the observer ward next to the tier 2 tower in mid of Mouse. Bottom lane, by the way, is about to attack, attack tier 3 tower. So they might be able to try and kill a fader here in the mid. And I think that is the objective. Firefly is actually already through two thirds of its duration. And they're gonna back up. Fade is looking for some kind of opening. You can see DED in middle lane, and uh, okay, a little late in the shackle. He got the creeps? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Guess the creeps on your Fade bot like that. <laughs> this Rubik is still grabbing, like, he actually hasn't got that much CS, but as you said, like, he hasn't died yet. It's the 209 Rubik. 67 CS at 34 minutes on a Rubik? That's pretty good. What is our lowest? It's 36 on, on the Witch Doctor. I think I think Misery's farm is pretty good here. It's that's what you can expect out of a good game, so definitely staying up to par. He's probably above the average GPM of Rubik in games like this by quite a bit. So he's he's doing well for himself. MSS is gonna gain so much money, dude. He's he's got two point six K gold right now. Pushing out top lane after already having Heart Man to Battle Fury and Treads. 34 minutes. Oh, in. they're gonna find him! Yeah, he's gonna blink. He's got blink off that right now, and they got away. Yao yes, couldn't hex. get the last two off in time, fourth half down, so he can get the last two, but there's a lot of support coming over, and he's still got mana style, Pycat TV's in, they commit the black hole, they need to summon DD, but the BKB is to him in misery, he gets the black hole right now, he doesn't have blink dagger, he blinked himself up to do that, picking up Lin, and Fader focus firing down this Viper, not gonna work, misery, he's got mana of a stun up, so he actually cannot use the black hole, will lose the gem, and a big fight to take here for LGD. Now it's boss instantly, they must be adding pressure somewhere across the map. They cannot allow LGD to freely go in for Roshan again. They will get Rosh. But it's not its not the end of the world, but it's a costly mistake for Mouse that didn't need to happen. They're gonna lose the Roshan. But again, no map pressure being... Well, they, they, put out they lost the way. gem, though. They lost the gem. Yeah. The vision's gonna get a little bit more limited for them. It's its a little bit of a blow to Mouse, but I wouldn't start saying they're, they're on the back foot at all. Even losing Rosh now, I, I'm still favoring them for sure at this point in the game. They've got through the hard part. This is when most teams will just start cruising, AM and Profitable Split Farm, they get a net worth of 25,000 on both, and then they go and end the game. And even the Wind Ranger is getting good farm too, so they have three cores farming well, a Rubik with all he needs, a Shaker with Blink on the trail. There's, um, there's pretty much nothing speaking against Mouse winning this game at this point, unless they get another bad fight closer to their base, hmm. so LGD can actually start hitting some buildings, which I think they haven't done for like 15 minutes now, they haven't it's, even touched the tower. It's been a while, man. Like the, the only ones they can reach are the tier twos, but I haven't seen the creep wave actually go over the uh, dire side of the river for a very long time. I think it's actually the first time we've seen Yao try and actually farm his own jungle, but uh, he'll be finding out there's only one. Uh, there's only one camp he can firefly. That veil of discourse now finished for pass. That's actually fully done. We're we actually looking for that to buff up as well across all the mouse sports abilities. How much damage are we really amplifying there? On which? Uh, veil of discord, which is on the ES. Oh, uh, let's see. Well, Echo Slam, of course. A little bit on the power shot. Wrath of Nature. Shouldn't be underestimated with that. Fate Bolt. And, of course, Mana Void, if you manage to find. <laughs> like, Mana Void with, with Veil could one-shot the entire LGD team if he gets a good Mana Void off on Witch Doctor or Enigma. Their Mana Pools are both above a thousand, so... Okay, it won't kill the Razor. I promise. <laughs> but the others... Actually, the Razor is the hero with the most Mana in the LGD lineup, which is interesting to see. He's just that high level and has Axe and, of course, Check the side. Check out jungle. There's a Blink Dagger also now on Nature's Prophet, so he's got Blink Initiation with this side of the vice. He still needs somebody to get through that oh, BKB and Ward placed by Pass Fisher. Oh, DC's locked in there. He actually can't get himself out of that little hole. Now the Necreus is down, they got a lasso, but then it is to pick up. Pass right on him, they want Yao dead while DDC can't do anything. The Necro is actually are moving up already, attacking on Rabbit the Shackle. It hit DDC up against the tree line. They're gonna move up across the side, while a little bit further up is DD. He doesn't have Black Hole available. Hex up, but Rabbit dealing some good damage here. He'll kill off Pycat, Fader, try and look for Shackles and keep DDC out of this fight. But Mouse Sports, they have to back up. They've lost one for one right now. Or do they? They are still hanging around a little bit longer than I thought they would. I suppose there's no lasso. My parody is there, but there's no eye of the storm. LGD are coming in a long way. Mouse can't be happy with that. Getting a one-for-one -one trade when you kill off the Bat Rider for free in the beginning and you start chasing up, you have everything available. But they walked up like Slam. three different high ground yeah, areas they, and tried they to didn't, fight. They didn't have a clear-cut plan in mind for how they wanted to pursue, whereas LGD were, were spreading out a little bit wiser and uh, 
and ended up getting the trade on Pycat. So that's actually a gem on the ground here that that LGD are going to get back, which is their own gem on DDC. So, well, one for one trade. Again, there's nothing big coming out of this for LGD. So the farm will still be going Mouseport's way. They'll keep split pushing. Surprisingly enough, the Razor's actually starting to catch up to AM. It's because of these kills, the Roshans, he ended the kill streak of the Prophet that gave him about 600. It's also the fact that AM keeps dying. Yeah. Uh, we haven't seen the Razor die in a very long time. He's 614 now. Yeah, there's three deaths on the AM and only one on the Razor, so. And he's still got the Aegos Immortal. And the Cheese is also still over on the Viper. Both were not, not expended. Is that, was that, is that the second fight you were talking about? Oh, Hex! Yao, bottom lane! Yeah, this is troublesome right now. Maybe Yao, he got the lasso though! Pulling MSS away, Rabbit, lasso stolen by Misery! Pulling the Razor back now, MSS, Mana Styles back down again on the bottom lane. Searching for Rabbit, support's coming up from the side, there's Fader, power shotting up, searching for some kind of pickoff. Mini Sun over on DDC. The Necro units are out too, DD's in, this time he does have Blink Dagger, BKB, Black Hole, Malthus on over on Fader, Rappus moving over, they won this Wind Ranger dead, no 4 star, Fissure trying to fight some space, now the 4 star from Misery, but he still goes down to the Viper ultimate. Mouseport's movement in these fights is really weird, again, Pi Fasa tries to come in for a flank, goes for a Shackle Shot, it doesn't land, and then it's as if he stays around and his team just abandons him in a fight they could have easily taken. Yeah. Lasso was in cooldown, Razor was half HP, already used his BKB, the Eye of the Storm was about to run out, and then they kind of just split up again and... LGD keep getting freebies, which I feel like they shouldn't. If Maus aren't confident in fighting, then just don't fight. Yeah. They don't need to. Yeah, because Animage getting bigger and bigger. He's, he's actually um, only 900 or 800 gold away from having his full... Actually, no, he's uh, 1100 gold away from having his butterfly. Double down. And that'll be his next item of choice. And he'll be farming the Dire Ancients now, so getting a lot of... Uh... A lot of value out of this, controlling the map again. Mouseport's still in control of the game and in control of the map, but... Making a few costly mistakes here that give LGD hope of, of coming back. Remember, they were behind 11 to 1. Now it's 16-11, and that was supposed to be the easy part of the game for LGD that they lost. And now that it's getting hard, they're stepping it up. I'm, I'm still interested to watch what Lin's doing at the moment. He actually bought the recipe for a heart. Now he's got a Maelstrom, Aghanims, as well as Mech. This guy's got a lot of life points as this. But uh, is it now they just look and say, well, I'll just tank it up completely and let the Razor do all the DPS work? Throw out my ultimate as often as I can? Maybe that is, is, is a thing he's looking at. I can stand the fight, and it's a Viper Strike after Viper Strike after Viper Strike. That's only if he doesn't have AM hitting him for one second, in which case he loses all his mana. <laughs> point. So. And then he's like, oh, I'll, I'll then attack MSS. Wait, I can't, he's got evasion. But I'm really surprised he doesn't finish the Mjolnir. I think it's great here when you're playing against the the amount of, uh, of teamfight units that Mouseports have. I guess his main concern is whoever he puts the Mjolnir on will be killing all the Necro books and might die from it. But then put it on a hero that has a BKB. Put it on Rabbit, let him go in front, do a lot of good damage, and have the attack speed for yourself as well as the chain locking effect. Hard to say for now, though. I mean, LGD are still... they're still hanging in there. This is the point of the game when I would have expected Mouse to start taking their first tier 3 or maybe even Barracks, but they're not close yet. LGD are starting to get more items. I got a Shiva's got over an Enigma as well just now. Yep. But they, this is they a big are... Enigma. Hmm? This is getting... this is a big Enigma. He is. He's as farmed as the Prophet, actually. The, the only thing I, I kind of don't... I don't understand how LGD is still meant to win from here. Like, they take a team fight, and unless they get a five-man wipe, I still don't see them winning, because the split push is just too powerful. Like, between any mage as well as Prophet, they're pushing power and speed. It's really dangerous. Now, middle lane, there's an initiation. The Shackle actually misses on Rabbit, so the Fissure has to come down, keeping DDC away. Yao will Firefly himself up. Now, Pyke is still the main one. He's got Hex of his iron pass, jumps in, gets the Echo Slam off on Rabbit, but that bouncing cast is not making it easy. Yao, low on life, but now the Wish Shot pass. He does go down, actually bounces also to the four staffing Fader, who gets lassoed and dragged back into the river. Two heroes down, but this is what happens. They take a two-man fight, and Pycat moves top lane, and they must respond. This is why I don't understand how LGD are meant to win. You take fight after fight, but you don't gain the advantage. They're gaining gold, actually. Yeah, <laughs> Which but, is but what... gold doesn't really mean anything when you, when you lose a Rax, but they haven't lost a Rax yet, so... 
it kind of means something the moment LGD managed to one time take a fight across the river. Because those are the fights that Mao should be feeling comfortable in. They're already on their side of the map. They can play more defensively around their positioning. But, you know, when you're playing Prophet AM in this type of game, you're supposed to be gaining gold. True. And they're losing gold, they're actually getting drained, which is kind of unbelievable considering LGD hasn't crossed the river for 20 minutes. They're still finding resources from these fights, they're finding their Oshans, farming their own jungle as much as possible, and the lanes. This part of the game, Mouse should be effectively gaining about 500 gold per minute over LGD or something similar, right? AM will farm both jungles, Prophet split pushes, you don't get caught out, you just keep farming. Yep. And the thing is, LGD find these pickups without even using a smoke. Like, they're just walking in. It's, it, but it's, it's Mouse bots who are the ones who are initiating. Yeah, it's... Like, they're moving as though they want to fight when they don't have to. But they find LGD, and like, LGD always at the better position, too. Like, they're up on the high ground at that point. Mouse are just being a little bit too eager. Yeah, I but think they the, just want to get the victory and then say, you know what, I, we just play up against Doobie next. If we get the two victories, we're like, yes, we're through and we'll let the other guys just battle it out. It is arguably Mouse's weakest stage in the game that we're coming into now, though. I mean, they're a great early game team and they have lost so many games on playing a poor mid game with bad decision making or getting caught out or just not keeping their cool in the right situation. And perhaps it's coming back to haunt them again in this game that it's just... It's a, it's a problem. I can't really find the words to describe this right now. It's just Mao's are a little over eager, not farming enough, and I think maybe now they're realizing what situation they're in and what they should be doing, but they've lost 10 minutes of game time, effectively, with the place they MSS, made. he's in trouble. He just swings oh, in on that point. happening again. It's, it's actually, actually happening again. He got, well, nothing off. There goes Refresher Orb. Aghanim stepped her off here from Rabbit. He gets forced up to wait, though, and this could be a big waste if they don't get this kill over on MSS. They don't. They get a back up. The Enigma first refresher Akinim's ulti being used by a rabbit, and it was minimal to no effectiveness. Illusion. Is it just me, or did he miss like three or four attacks on MSS then too, after the hex wore off? It didn't really matter. He would still have had plenty of health on MSS, and he even has the heart, so he's regened up now. This is this is the type of situation when Mouse can actually look to fight. There's two Razor ultimates on cooldown, and they know it. There's Black Hole, which is the one thing they have to look out for that Misery has to stay away from. And then I think they're pretty much good to go, but they don't have to fight, they can also just choose not to, but I think LG will consider is over on Lin. Man, that bouncing cast is flying around inside the Mouseport's lineup, stopping MSS, but they take it to mid-tower. They said, like, no fight, why, why fight? Yep, four and three just putting pressure here. It's actually really hard for LGD to bring down without... They have a lineup that doesn't really want to get MKBs. We might see MKB on Rabbit as the next item, but... I think they're just going to rely on being able to hex out the AM to remove the evasion and then kill him that way, but what if MSS gets a BKB? Black Hole's the only savior as well as last two, that's it. It's the only thing that can save him. I don't think they have enough physical damage during that, unless if it's Razor's ultimate hitting him, which you really can't rely on. <laughs> Razor's yeah. ultimate will hit the lowest HP nearby target, and since AM has 3000 health, it's probably not him. <laughs> <laughs> if there's anything else, a necro book inside the black hole, then he's gonna ulti that one down, and then basically his ultimate will be wasted, and they can't kill MSS. It's still, mouths are still in control. Oh, that's an aggressive TP pike. Oh. See the the way the graph has been going for the last two minutes. That's the kind of slope I'm looking for from mouths for the next ten minutes. That's how it should be going. That little bit of a rise that they've had. That's how the graph should have looked for the last ten minutes, but yeah. LGD have been finding the openings, and now Roche is up again. This is going to be a really important objective for both teams. I don't think Mal's want to give this away. This is going to be an important decision, really. Yeah. Like, for, for me, like, LGD are thinking, they, like, they, we want Roshan. We want to have two Vipers, or potentially two regular property Vipers, uh, during the middle of the fight. But, how much do we have to lose for it? In fact, I even think at this point, that Roshan's not worth them taking, because of just what they could lose at, lose at the end. Unless they can get a fight beforehand. The problem is if they if they don't get the fight beforehand in time, you could just send Andy Mage in there and he can solo Roshan. So what are you supposed to do? Do you defend your base? Do you try and go for a fight? Or do you just continuously play passive until you think you've got more items ready to go? But what's more items? You've already got Refresher Aghanims over on Razor. Like you, you want a double black hole Shiva's guard? Viper could start becoming a carry at this rate. He can start building carry items. I would expect him after this heart to he probably still Mjolnir. get the Mjolnir. And then he'll be looking for a butterfly or an MKB and start hitting really hard. 
Well, the thing is, usually I would say in this situation, you're absolutely right, but based on the last 15 minutes of play from Mouse, I don't, if I'm LGD, I don't see any reason to change my strategy, because Mouse seems to be running at them and giving them kills, right? Yeah. So if that tendency just continues, LGD will wait for that to happen, and then they'll take Roche. They won't risk it. I saw a vision out there. Grab it. Okay, Grab it. Pycat, Pycat, what are you doing, man? The ping came out there from Vader. He's like, yo, Pycat, wake up. Rabbit actually uses refresh oh, and he as can't well. Reach the hex. And MSS is doing Roche. Yep. And he just uses refresher off. They don't have a double ulti from Rabbit. They can't take a fight. They literally cannot find mouse ports right now. And Pike had even like an army of trees, a vision to make sure that Lin is kept out. I think they actually can fight. Rubik is top. Oh, Enigma sure. jumps in on this. Blink BKB. Look for the black hole right now. And there she goes. Roshan, 90, 70 life points. They haven't got themselves a kill yet. Roshan killed by the Dyer. And where's the Aegis Mall? Not picked up just yet. The Wish Hunter only is down. And Mouse Ports. There's three on the sidelines. The Aegis Immortal ended up in the hands of the Animage. But easy ways now. Blink away. Echo Slam from Pass. He catches them all. That gets a five man fissure. DD though. The mech comes up in time. They'll lose the Earthshaker. And MSS is in the middle of a fight. He doesn't want to be him. One second till Blink Dagger, force up away, the Blink away from the Rubik as well, who came in from the north, Misery has gone rogue, and they're trying to catch up to him, he's got Blink in 5 seconds, force up in 10, he's got, he needs to actually steal Firefly right now, but the sticky napalm was used, if he turns for it, no, nope, Blink himself up, the TP scroll, 2 seconds, Yao, right behind him, 3, Flame Break, now used, Misery turned to a Piglet, and he'll die up on the top lane, 4 heroes lost for Mouse Sports, Roshan was gained, like, uh, killed off by LGD. The Aegis was snatched by the Anti-Mage, but it's LGD that take the advantage at the end of the day. They Apart have, from the fact that MSS didn't die. They have got to be face palming right now, Miles. That was such an such an opening in the map that they found. Actually, the call to go Roche was great. Yep. They knew the refresher was used top. They found the opening, and then for some reason, Miles are going for Roshan with three heroes, and Rubik is top. They, they have a Rubik split pushing top without any way of getting into the fight. So when the black hole comes in, imagine this fight in the pit again. Let's say Enigma blinks in, black hole's three. Misery could stand anywhere outside the pit. He can steal the black hole, blink in behind Enigma black hole. Game over. It's actually the end of the game if they make that play. They'll kill three heroes, they'll get Roche, and they'll go high ground. But instead, they went for the gamble, which was like the... The risk to reward ratio in a play like that is never worth it for any team. Yep. And I, I cannot imagine what they are thinking in the moment, having Misery up there and then going for that play. They know it can happen. Why even take the risk? I don't know, man. I don't know. But the risk is going getting even higher. That refresh Shiva's guard, Black Hole we're talking about, S up. So DD in 55 seconds will be looking for an engagement. You have an Aghanim Scepter over on the Witch Doctor. So his ultimate has just become like five times more powerful during the engagement. You've got Lin with 30, well, 4k gold on himself right now. He can finish up his full Mjolnir. I don't think he'll have money for buyback at that point, but it's still looking good. And MSS, are we actually seeing mass BTs on the way out? We got BTs from Yao as well as from, from Rabbit. And MSS uh, is gone, is running treads and BTs on uh -oh, him. Oh, Mouse in a really I bad spot. There. They're Blink, not going to lose one. They're going to lose two. Nappin. Caught Nappin. DD's going to come in. Malibus on over on Misery. But they can't decide who to attack. LGD, they're splitting up. Wish of Roddy will kill off Misery. Pike and over on the side. They get both. They get both. MSS is pushing as quickly as he can on this bottom lane. They need a response from LGD before they start pushing towards that tier 2 tower. Now Rabbit is going to push out the bottom lane. And I... I don't know. I'm really confused right now. I generally tend to know what to say and analyze in these games, but... I cannot figure out what Mouse's game plan is and what they're thinking. Like, standing like that, what was the reasoning in this play? It's, it's really confusing. It's like... I don't, th I don't think it really is reasoning. Like, it looked like they were just standing there talking it looks like about what they should okay, do. Okay, the best way I can talk... Uh, the best way I can put this into words is it seems like they've lost their way. They, they're not sure what the game plan is anymore. They had a really clear-cut plan in the early game. They executed it well. The early part of the mid-game was looking Radiant's great. And then they just lost the their way. And LGD stay calm and collected. They look for the objectives. They play the game they can play. And just gradually, gradually build an advantage. And now, would you believe it? They're in the Radiant base. Yep. After 30 minutes of playing on their own half of the map, they're actually going high ground. Rabbit Radiant has two ultimates available. He's actually not Unless we get a big echo right here, now. this could be Rax. 
I no. don't believe it. Fortification's gone. Rabbit He's triggers the, uh, the second ultimate right now, and they're just melting that melee rag. Shackle will fly. He does actually latch on Rabbit. Negrigus are coming up as well, but he triggers the BKB. The melee rag is toast. MSS was trying to push out the bottom lane to get some kind of collateral, but you can't stop a push at that speed. And now Fader. Oh, yeah, she stopped. He was looking for a shackle on LGD for like one, like if he could get two heroes, he'd get two heroes, but he couldn't get anyone. LGD just freely walked up mid and took the melee racks. Yeah, they got the two pickoffs before that allowed it. So, at this point in the game, with the with the with the look at the net worth, like, do you remember 15 minutes ago? Number one AM, number two profit. Profit is now number five. 11,000 net worth behind the razor that he was leading on. That means over the last 15 or 20 minutes, Prophet has effectively gained about 2,000 or 3,000 net worth, and Razor has gained 15. Yep. AM has kept up, which AM does, but AM is a bad, super late game carry. Yep. It's an off. It's a common he misconception that AM is a great late gamer. He's great in the early part of the late game because he gets there fast and he's really uh, potent around that point. But now that we're getting to the one hour mark, AM is one of the weaker late game carries in comparison to a lot of others. I would even say in many cases Viper can be a stronger super late gamer. Razor is doing fine so far. Uh, a lot of other carries we could mention, but there aren't in this I'm game, right? But I'm, I'm not seeing AM's impact right now. We need an Abyssal Blade on MSS. He has to sell the Battle Fury if they want to fight. They're looking to top lane, man. A blink to Hex on DD. There's so much support behind him though. DDC is still bright, smack bang behind him. So is Yao. Of course, so many problems. I don't understand what mouse bots are actually doing. Why is PyCat not in the bottom lane? The power is split push. The yeah, power is split push and avoiding the team fights of LGD. Right now it makes sense because the entire LGD squad is missing and he doesn't know. He, he has to play it safe at this oh, point and not show right him below him. Yep. They're actually hiding in the tree right now and now MSS. Oh, MSS. He only just blinked. He's got one second and now he's hexed up and they're not going to help him. In fact, you just look at them, they're splitting up the fight. MSS, they accept the fact he'll die. There's some movement coming out from Misery. He's going to TP himself out next to Lin. As the AM illusions are pushing a, a damage down the tier 3 tower, Pycat was like, screw this, I'm out. We're going bottom lane. I actually almost want to see Pycat with the Desolator, just so we can bring down buildings a little bit faster. Because they are. this is going to turn into a race. This is this is going to be a base race game if Mouseport's going to win this. And I don't know if you can win a base race game up against a Refresher Aghanim's Razor. Especially one who's about to finish a full butterfly as well. They even need a Monkey King bar over on this Prophet to find the damage and let's directly not forget, towards him. Let's not forget how much damage Viper can do as well. When buildings start getting low, the Nether Toxin, he now has the MKB I was expecting him to pick up. The damage is going to be through the roof from this LGD lineup. They have what it takes to go and end the game, actually. If they manage to reach the Mouse Sports base at this point, it's another lane of racks. I think even with AM buying back, the raw teamfight power of LGD now is just superior to Mouse, with the one exception, Misery has to steal Black Hole. Yeah. I, I cannot see Mouse winning teamfights any longer without that happening, or without an incredible Echo Slam out of us. They're coming. Yep. They are coming. They actually managed to reach the base again. Rabbit has There's two ultimates ready. Right, they, they have to let the and he has a new BKB, did you mention that? Yeah, I didn't actually notice he had a new BKB, BKB. it's a 9 second one, and now Refresher Orb is being used. First ultimate goes off, he's got both of them, look at this, look at this Drax, it's gone. They know they can't fight, they've actually got to wait until the Eye of the Storm is over, before they can battle up against uh, LGD, and LGD, they just, they just seriously walked in and stole Mouse's TV, and walked straight back out again. I, it's midday burglary. It is. <laughs> it really is. He stole their TV. Okay, that's so a, good, that's just, a good one. I, I don't good. understand what Mouse Force is meant to do about it. They could have bought back the aim and fought, but they're so afraid right now that if they buy back aim and lose the fight, the game is over. So they'd yeah. rather concede the barracks than take the chance. I can understand that mentality based on how things have been going up until this point, that they, they're like, okay, based on the previous fights, our aim will get caught and get killed. So... They're playing without confidence. Mouse look like a team that are falling apart in this game and cannot cannot find out what they actually want to do. Whereas LGD have been the smart they've ganking. been moving us one unit. They've been playing so much better in the last 30 minutes than Mouse have, which is Rush a big shame for Mouse because they played a much better early game. But at the end of the day, the game doesn't end early. The game ends later. Mouse bots are gonna back like okay. Roshan is up. LGD know this. They were they had a bad rider inside the pit. What have happened? Now Mouse bots have to make the decision. Who do they kill? Lin's the first one to show himself, and Pycat actually slows up. 
He gets the Hex, MSS jumps in, triggers the BKB. They got a fidget stone over towards DDC. They almost, they, they don't know who they want to take out. DD, he managed to get the black hole over an MSS. They've almost brought him down, and DDC, it's a huge element from him. They've got two heroes on the sideline. Vader will die a little bit further up the hill. You've got a Prophet running into Roshan, where he saved the black hole. His task. Ah, it's over. This game is over, man. You've got two. They're going to go straight down the mid for GG. Up on top lane, maybe not fully. Pycat and MSS, they're trying to backdoor this. They use a double buyback with a BT AM to go up there. Piecat right behind them. They had to make that play. Else, it was else yeah, they it was over bigger. if they didn't if they didn't buy back for that one. If they LGD had, had a free path down the middle, Mouse Force would have nothing left in their base. Misery stole Black Hole in that fight, and then he walked into the Black Hole. <laughs> so. Like, the steal was good. I'm not saying that was an easy play, because the positioning, actually LGD did a really good job at splitting out, so oh, yeah. the stolen black hole would have been ha hard to use properly. My point is, he did actually manage to steal it, and they still didn't find the opening. And that, for me, was the last hope for Mouse in this game, was to steal that and make a fight out of it. But even after they steal it, they still can't find the fight. LGD, easy cleanup in that fight, they will be going for a Roshan. Yep. Mouse. This is, this is how many cheeses have they actually got? They got one over on Lin's. I'm down. reaching the point now where I'm gonna look forward. Let's. Hypothetically, let's say this game is going to be won by LGD, which seems incredibly likely at this moment. Yes. This is a tiebreaker between three teams where Mouse needs to play newbie and LGD needs to play newbie. After a game like this, keeping your mentality high and going in with a fresh mind against a team like Newbie for Mouse is going to be so hard. And they will, during the draft of the next game, if they start second-guessing themselves based on this game, they're like, well, we picked this lineup, we were actually doing really well, and we had so good late game, and we still lost late game, we have to do X, or we have to do Y, or we have to do Z, mm -hmm. and neither of them, then they end up with like a hybrid draft that does, that's good at a lot of things, but great at nothing, Yeah. then I think Newbie's gonna beat them, and then they're out. Like. This was the game for Miles to win, and they might have just lost it. Oh man, looks like the fat lady is definitely not going to be singing just yet, but uh... It's getting pretty damn close to it. They need at least some level of counteracts here, Mouseport, so the Prophet can start doing his work. But LGD, they're inside their own jungle, and they're waiting for them to come out. The full butterfly is now over on Lin. LGD are just so stacked right now, there's even cheese on a courier in cases. In case the courier gets ganked. He pushes out the mid. Pass, fade up, misery. I, I I don't know about this. I really don't know about this. There is no tree protection here. There's it's actually a good player if they get him. Slam on DD. They need the kill. Pick up. Shackle. Rabbit comes in. They've got to back themselves up. Rabbit used to refresh Roldy again. And D pass. Fidget goes out. It looks like a little bit of smoke mirrors right now because MSS and Pycat. Bottom lane, there's a DD rune over on this nature's prophet. And LGD will have to come back here. Yeah, they will at least be dealing a little bit of damage to the tier 3 here. 6 damage, 50, 100, 1, 200, 300, 400. Okay, they're just letting the... Uh, are they letting the Elos take the tower? Okay. 1,000. Um, uh, LGD? Uh, <laughs> okay. They timed out 62 dot light points on that tier 3 tower. We don't now. need that tower anyway, whatever. It's just a tier 3 in our base against AM Prophet. We don't need to be able to defend our base, say LGD. And... Gonna start pushing he, he, out here. He can back door that now, Pycat. He comes in. He, he could actually w hit that with one attack, but he won't be able to get the racks without creep support. Correct. So but but still, that's not, still going to be the tower at this point. Is is still better for you. Uh, bottom lane. There's a lot of movement down here. Didi, he is a long, long way from home, and he's dead. 95 seconds on the sideline. At the same time, Wind Ranger dies up on the top lane. So we get a one for one trade. They're a long way out. And MSS, he's Rabbit's like, oh, gotta go fast. He needs to cross the entire map. He has 30 seconds cooldown on his boots of travel. He needs to run all the way down there. Maybe Mouse can get in and do a bit of damage, but the Mantis style and AM already used. Pycat's hesitating to go in, which makes mm. perfect sense. Yeah, they're not making this. That, they, uh, they're pretty sure Enigma's gonna have buyback as well. So I think this... DDC might just deny the tower here. MSS, oh, oh wow, Rabbit, he's so close. He is so close. You, I like you this could, play you from could Mouse. Sniff it, man. He's so close. This looks like a team right now that knows what they want to do. Okay, now they don't know anymore. No, no. It was now a... they should know that they should get out misery, of their misery. misery. Move! Move! Why is he standing move! There? He's picking up Rabbit. They're going in! Wait, maybe don't move. Maybe this is going to work for him. Rabbit, he's down. 90 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> How the hell did that work for them? <laughs> he literally sat there and... and, and uh, <laughs> the good old <laughs> AFK bait. That... <laughs> 
Okay. The, okay. The, okay. Okay. The biggest kill Mouse has got for 30 <laughs> minutes was based off a Rubik standing still and not reacting to getting attacked by a razor. The funny thing is, though, like he did react straight away. Like he saw the razor walk past him, the necro unit was there, and they walked past him. He's like, a telekinesis. Oh, oh wait, I, I've, I've still got midnight pulse. Aha! I have. Um, I, I am the master of magic, and it just seems things come naturally to him. <laughs> what is this game? This is absolutely crazy. I could not have imagined we would get to this point, honestly. I was I... thinking either LGD win this game in 20 or 25 minutes, or Mao's win in 45. Yeah. But now, uh, we're suddenly 63 minutes in. Wind Ranger as well as any major getting buybacks off cooldown. You have double Pycat, remember this. He's got 5,000 gold on himself, and now... Wait, no, 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 no. Uh, they're forcing a team fight on bottom lane. Is this going to be an Echo Slam? Jump. Liz being picked up and thrown down. BKB jump in by Diddy. Bail! Bail! And quickly, they did it. There's a refresher orb still available for Diddy. Pycat, he's getting caught out. Remember, there's two Pycat still available here. But the BKB's going on cooldown. Pass, he's looking at this. It's so tempting for him to jump at the moment. He wants to. Lin, he's sitting out there with Aegis saying, please, please, smack me around. Masochist Viper. <laughs> That's all he's asking for! Then DDC will protect him if he needs to. But they're backing up. And uh, Fader, he's gonna push out the top lane as well. That's a big army from the Radiant side, over on top. Yeah, that lane has to be defended by Rabbit. And will be defended by Rabbit. He is just gonna draw the entirety of the free wave with him. Actually, a little bit doesn't... Okay, here comes DD with the... With the Shivas. I mean, wh okay, what does DD get next? It's a 30k net worth Enigma. Lincoln's. He has Axe, Refresher... Lincoln's. BKB... Lincoln's. So the, yeah, so they can't steal Black Hole. Bingo. That could be a, I, I don't know, I think maybe even the Hex is actually better, but... I, I'd be worried about the Hex if he... But what, he, if what he, does he sell, actually? What he, would he get rid of? He can't sell his boots. Uh, if actually, he should just buy BTs. <laughs> Treads into BOTs is a given, and then after that... I don't know. I, I'd almost if you want to sacrifice either of these items for Lincolns, then I'm, I'm not sure which one you would choose. You can't sacrifice the Shivas unless someone's walking around with something like an, like a, an AC or something. But even then, you can't sacrifice it. Like, Prophet's walking around with his own Assault Kiras. And what are you going to buy here, Pycat, as well? Alright, I know, he bought... Like, he bought back before, but he's still got 4.8k gold on this Nature's Prophet. He kind of needs a Monkey King bar up against the Viper. But at the same time, I still feel like his split push is going to be better. And Viper doesn't have... Okay, Mon Viper does have a Monkey King bar and Butterflies. There's no point getting that on a Prophet. And everyone's got so much money right now that buying any useful items is... <laughs> they've already got him. Bottom lane. Oh, they caught him out. Rabbit's out too far. The Echo Slam DD! In for the hole. Emma says it fast for Misery. He saw Black Hobby. He doesn't matter for it. Now he does. He returns it on the entire LGD lineup. Emma says it's cleaving him apart. Three heroes are down. The Courier is also in the run out of here. Oh, it's going to be catastrophe. Catastrophe for LGD and their animals included. They got three players down. Oh, Five back comes out from Rabbit. On that Courier. <laughs> Five. What is on it? It's it has BTs and Maelstrom and a TP. A lot of money on the courier. Now mouse bots have to look to breach again. How much damage they deal then? The cleave up through top. Pycat's got a tier three tower. The buybacks come out from the Enigma as well. So two buybacks now on cooldown for LGD for the coming fight. And M MSS pushing through the bottom lane. Pycat he's lost control of the top lane. But the trees are coming in to attack the tier 3 tower in the mid. Oh that bottom tower is denied by Viper God. as well. Okay, yeah. two racks is exposed for LGD. And Maos Dyer's are now finding themselves in the situation that they would have loved to be in 30 or 20 minutes ago at least. Starting to split push the lanes, are getting into LGD's base and putting a lot of pressure, forcing buybacks. When's next Roche? We're looking at... We'll know in 45 potential seconds. Sp potential spawn time in, in yeah, 30, 40 seconds right now. Regeneration for pass 2, so he's going to get everything back as well. He's got 2.5k gold. Man, with a, veil of, with a veil of Discord, buff it up, grab yourself a nice little Aghanim Scepter as well. MSS, buy yourself a brand new BKB. He only use two charges. Uh, he's got, no got 10,000 gold why on is he MSS. Not, okay, why is he not selling the Battle Fury and getting an Abyssal Blade right now? I would ask you actually exactly the same question. Or would you get a Bissel? Would you need Monkey King Bar up against this lineup? Uh, how many hexes do they have? Prophet has a hex. Prophet has a hex. <laughs> so. And, you, and you're done. <laughs> he could perhaps need to get. Oh, how many butterflies? One, two. 
Okay. Yeah, I, I actually think for this case, maybe MKB is more valuable, but yeah. I, I, at I the same time, the Abyssal, Abyssal allows him to jump in, Abyssal Enigma, kill Enigma. Yeah. Abyssal Mansa, all in. Just hit the Enigma 20 times with your illusions, Rubik non avoid, get the kill. Rubik it's the highest has a hex value now. Now they have two hexes. Side. Abyssal. I still don't understand why Misery didn't get the Agonims, but. Just because of this game. Just because of this game. Oh, there you go. We have a new record being reached. How many? Hang on. Is 460. That, is, is, is that this one, though? Is that actually, like, is this where the record was created, this game? I think we had a really farmed Enigma earlier in the tournament, too, but I guess I guess that one just got passed, surpassed. I think it was, like, 450. We, we had, um, what was it, a Naga Siren? It was, it was a Ferrari Tempest Spirit cracked around 1100 CS yeah, but during the competition. For Enigma, Enigma getting 450 CS is pretty ridiculous. Yeah. That's for sure. Man, LGD, DD. I still can't believe that I... Okay, we're talking about Mouseport sieging their base and kills going the way of Mouseport, but pass, get out, 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 out. Into the trees, quick TP, oh, play break from Yao! How the hell did he get away with that? He actually snuck know. up He snuck up there to place a ward. He actually blinked It immediately got countered by the gem. So, he just put his life at risk for a ward that immediately got, got counter-warded. Okay, when's Roshan up? Roshan is up in 40 oh, seconds long. time and there's a DD rune in the bottom river. They Misery can still has Black Hole for another minute and a half, I think. Yes, roughly a minute and a half. Hmm. Alright. Mouseports, it feels like they have the advantage in this game, man. I don't know if I'm just tripping balls right now, but they are still a mid melee racks up and the bottom racks up as well. They are only winning fights with a stolen Black Hole. Yeah. I'm not sure if you can call that an advantage then. But then again, we thought that before as well. We thought that LGD had this game in the bag. And then all of a sudden the bag was opened and then like nothing was inside. Yeah, then this Black Hole was Yow. stolen. Yow. He's coming oh, up to the side. He's jumping in. He no, got Pycat. Pie dragging him back. The Viper holding as well. They're committing a lot to Pycat there and they got him down. I'm Eight. surprised they don't prioritize Misery because then they can chase. Like Pycat could just buy back and come in. If Misery dies, they can go for more kills. Yep. But... Well, at the end of the day, if it's just one kill and nothing breaks out, then it's better to get one of the cores than one of the supports, obviously, but... If, it it opens up for Roshan right now. That could have been turned around there. Very easily. But they're, they're, they're picking up bottom lane. Lin's baiting. Lin is literally on a hook. And DD is also Rosh. in the neighborhood, but look what MSS is doing. This is really, really smart from them as well. They still have to control the mid lane, but more importantly, with the Prophet down, there needs to be momentum coming in through the top lane. Because that's where mouse bots can strike the easiest. They're not going up against Super Size B creeps on that lane. M Misery can just contain the bottom lane with Bay Bolt for the moment, but they need LGD to be worried about losing parts of their base. Now, they're at Roshan at the moment. But if this top lane gets any closer, they may not feel they can finish the job here. Lin's damage output for everything he's got is taking too long to bring down this Roshan. Roche starts getting pretty strong 71 minutes in. <laughs> he does scale. He does now. It's not the level 1. Range Rax, they're fighting against Rain right Rax now. Range Rax is going to be yeah, lost right Mouse. now. Doing good damage here, actually. The anime illusions can almost do this solo. The Firefly is not killing him off fast enough. Yeah. They've got He's a Range Rax on the top lane. And this is what I was talking about. Like, you take an Aegis the Immortal here, how much is it really worth these days? I'd say I 500 bucks. That on the free market. This is not awkward. Not at all. <laughs> Pycat now is uh, has money for Monkey King Bar and buyback. If he goes back to base right now, we can I'm buy it as well. I'm wondering if that's what he wants, or if he wants the Daedalus. There's not much point for the. I, yeah, MKB is better. Yeah. Two two butterflies. It's probably the better choice. Abyssal. But wait, uh, why did he sell for it? Um. Yeah. What did he drop? <laughs> what did he have? Before? His heart. He sold his heart for the Abyssal what? instead of the butterfly. Why would you do that? I know Maos feel like they need to push the lanes, and it goes faster with the butterfly. Okay, look, look if that's at his it. concern, it's keep in. the butterfly it's on Battle Fury and the Courier. It's an all-in. They're going to force a fight right now. They're pushing up the middle lane. They want the mid to enter, and then they'll split the racks. They'll take top, and they'll take bottom. This is the plan right now from They're losing board. a tier 2. That's what's happening with this Yeah, right BKB jumps in. He got Fader. He got Fader. They're dragging him all the way back inside the base, and Fader, he's not going to get himself out. Try to win run. Meanwhile, up on top lane, DD, Echo Slam, tries on the black hole. He got Misery as well as Pass, but Pycat stands on the end. Misery, he's actually almost bleeding out from all of this, and he got Black Hole! He stole Black Hole, he's got 37 life points, and he managed to steal Black Hole. 
This is a big thing right now. Two minutes on the sideline for the Enigma. He has buyback available, but does not want to use it. That length on his death timer. 72 minutes into this game. The what Monkey King is buyer is finished on profit. On. The split push will continue. Wait, so how did Enigma get caught up there in the first place? What, how is it he got caught? I don't know. He was I, split I think pushing it's when the they're top back too. out again. They, they were pushing as a full team for LGD. And I just think it was like the man left behind. But he had boots of travel that he must have tried to use. They're getting off cooldown now. So I guess maybe yeah. Prophet TP'd in and hexed him. Interrupted. You, you got so many different ways to do it. Like or the creepy was TP'ing on died or something. But <laughs> Look at actually the build now coming off here from uh, from Fader. He's got Monkey King Bar and he's got Basher over on a Wind Ranger. Technically, how long can you lock somebody in there? You're like, if I can finish a pistol blade, maybe that'll also be really, really nice. He but I got focus fire. How much does that actually trigger? What? <laughs> what the hell? He's got a range chance of 10%, when he's focus firing, man. When he when he focus fires, could he technically perma bash somebody? Technically, 10% chance it should work. Oh, uh, there's an internal cooldown on the bash. It has a two-second cooldown and stuns for 1.4. Okay, so does you it, can't does it work with focus fire at least. Yeah, you have 10% chance of bashing, but and then the he, then he the MKB can kick in as well. He could start working on a hex. He could have got a Vlad's for his team. Five armor for everyone. 15% like, damage. He's like, nah, man, nah. I. This but is a this is a weird build. The Germans are always unique with their builds. This is a very Honey, weird build. Beta, Koro, they're all special. Yow. Is he gonna go again? He's looking at him. He's looking at two. He jumps in. He got Pycat. Again, Pycat being prioritized here. Bye, Baroni. Goodbye, Pycat. Yep. Uh, Rabbit let off both of his ultimates in that one. The middle lane is still being pressured out with his Necro books. Roshan isn't an option right now. LG still have to find a way to enter the base. Is this really going to turn out to be the longest game of the tournament so far? It could definitely do so, man. I think my prediction in the compendium was 91 to 100, so... I'm cheering for someone to win in 20 minutes. I, I had I had a crack to, um, I think I was up just over 100 on mine. But All right, so way, let's hope we don't go over 100. That, if, just for your compendium reasons. Only for compendium reasons. Bottom lane misery. Look at this, this guy's even pushing himself on this bottom lane. MSS is right behind him. MSS, I okay, we should even just look at the CS, because he's about to crack 1,000, man. What? He's at 863. Like Oh, this one, and they're waiting Misery for Misery has black hole stolen, and he's risking everything, hanging out in the side. If a Firefly comes in right now, he loses it all. He's CPing out. No, he's CPing out. Like. He's CPing towards the top lane. And, and he should be using that black hole, even just to get one kill. He needs to be teaming up with someone. So when Pycat's alive again, he needs to be basically standing there with MSS. So they can jump in, your Bissell Blade, your Black Hole, your Prophet jump in, and you nail whoever you catch out. One person needs to be too far out, and the only person right now they could get is Rabbit, who's up here inside the Dinoside Jungle. Just farming himself up. But the buybacks, this is the hilarious thing. There's only two people who don't have buyback. Wind Ranger and Rubik. They're the only two people that cannot come back to life again if a fight if a fight breaks out. Well, mid lane. Rabbit's pushing okay, let's what's the current goal? Can you bring up the current goal? Current gold, I'm seeing 9.1. There's 9.1k over on Lin. There's 6.5k over on Rabbit. There is almost 12,000 gold on MSS. This guy is literally Scrooge McDuck. I'm not sure why Rabbit isn't buying a new BKB. He has a four second BKB. With a new one, he has 19. He has 10 plus 9 from the refresher. <laughs> what are they waiting for? He actually, I'm sure he has enough gold for it. So the question is, does he want another item? Or did he just I, forgot, forget that he's rich? I I don't know, man. Viper now has 10,000 gold. I I still think you should just buy a whole brand spank and new a 10 second BKB. Three seconds might make such a, a two seconds might make such a huge difference during the fight. Oh. Uh, what what else would you do? You could drop the Manta. Like what what else? Like Vader. <laughs> Look at it. Stay in the trees. Stay in the trees. The trees are being disintegrated by the Enigma. This guy is not a man that donates money to Greenpeace. Like that bottom land is just cleared right now. No one wants to engage. They know how much is on the line here, man. You lose this game and you're one loss away from being completely out of the international. That's what's at stake here with this match. That's what's at stake. The team being back. Uh, Black Hole's also timed out. 
So it's no longer available. A rabbit. Okay, that's gonna send Mana Star Illusions in to at this point chip damaging away the melee racks. Like at all. So he just sends him in. He should be doing this in the bottom lane. Let the top lane push in and then just send a massive army of illusions to the bottom. We get a mana sale over on Viper. Wait, what the hell did he sell as well? Uh eggs? Yeah, he sold agony. I he guess. sold agonims to pick up a mana style. So what? They're gonna Manda style split push this in now. Oh yeah, he puts a mana style, he puts the Mjolnir effect over on one of the illusions, and that pushes the wave out. Without having to put himself at risk. This is what we're at. Is there anything even on the courier? There's actually okay, just for pure like like craps and giggles. There's cheese still sitting on this dire courier. I'm waiting for DDC to stack it. He is a known cheese fetishist. E e e Could uh, pick up his third. It's on the courier. I'm hearing a lasso. They got one. It's Misery up on the top lane. And now, well, there goes the Rubik. He is the only man who does not have a buyback. He is 1,400 gold short of it. And LGD, oh, they're going to try and push this, but look at bottom lane. Fader, Pycat, they're all coming in. And the TPs are coming back. The TP is coming back. If you have a very weak ladder, you might have trouble with this game. Radiant's top tower has fallen. They got a tower. Yes. The top tower is down. Progress from LGD. MSS is coming in mid. Back to defend. Look at MSS. He just walks up. He's like, man, I got buyback. Here, have my illusion. DDC, lose your life points. Bottom lane, it comes in. Necro units. They've got to attack on the range racks right now and just get some kind of split advantage here. But with that Mjolnir over on Lin, it doesn't take long to mop them up. Now top lane MSS, back to the pushing. 40. Okay, is there actually a limit for how much gold, like, but I know there's no limit I for want, how much I gold you can have. I want a stat on highest current gold ever, if that's actually recorded. I Especially think for TI. This is top three for sure. It's because it you're literally be on three. a hero where buying something extra, you could buy a Necro book and then cast it. I also want to point out the range racks on middle lane. Wonderful life points. It has 29 life points sitting here in the middle. Here One comes attack Mega and Melee gone. Creep. Here Never they mind. come. Razor got it. Rubik's up in seven Top seconds. Top lane. Radiance They're gonna go for the Megas, this is it! Yep. Moving up! Still dead. They There's have no to fight! Look where Park is though! He's back behind the lines, and now jump in! They pick up Vader! Wind Rage is in a lot of trouble! Echo Slam! It's over on DD! He's keeping Enigma out of the fight, but Pycat also pickles up! Everyone's gonna get to buy back in this one! DDC turns on the Omen! The Mana Boy! DD! In with the Omen! Then he may as well buy himself back into this fight! Misery! He saw Black Hole in this! He actually has Black Hole, but they need the rest of the team! Now they get ready to fight! Misery! Jump in! Three he zeros! He didn't, he didn't get Lin! And the damage! Misery! He evaporates to Lin from the side, now Rabbit gets the badge off and they got him! And it's over! The buyback will come out from the Earthshaker but Lin's on a, a full ultra kill! GG is it! 80 minutes and 32 seconds! <laughs> LGD waits it out! Nice is the call! Nice nice! Nice uh, Unbelievable game. I don't know where to start. Longest game of TI4. Yeah. I don't know. Where, I don't know what to start talking. I feel like we've covered everything during the game. So I mean, oh, my oh, conclusion on this game, my in-depth analysis is, the team with most cheeses win. I don't. They didn't even use any of them. I think they had like three unused cheeses by.